Today is August 16th, 2018. My name is Blair Williams, and I'm here at the Cumberland County Historical Society with Ray Heckman. So thank you, Mr. Heckman, for, for coming in. Quite welcome. <laughs> Glad I could do it. So the first question I, I usually have uh, is, how did your family first come to Cumberland County? Uh, my direct family, the Heckman family, mm -hmm. my dad was in the state police, and uh, I was born, uh, grew up in Bedford, and we moved to Cumberland County when he was uh, in charge of the substation on the turnpike mm. and we moved into Newville in 1950. Uh, so how, how old were you at that point in 1950? Ten. Ten. Okay. No, I'm sorry, eight. 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 And um, was the substation located in Newville or just outside it? It's out on the turnpike. Uh, how, how far away from Newville, then? It's about three miles. Okay, so relatively close. Right. And, um, so you mentioned your father was a state trooper. Uh, did your mother also work, or did she stay at home? She mostly at home. Okay. And did you have any siblings, or? I have a sister, Debbie, who's two years younger. And then later on, I have a sister, Pam, who's 12 years younger. So Pam was born in uh, Newville, then? Right. <laughs> okay. In 54. Mm. Was her. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, I, I, cause I'm trying to think, at that point, did um, did your mother have Pam at home, or was she born in uh, Carlisle Hospital? or Chambersburg Hospital. The Chambersburg? Chambersburg. Chambersburg, <clears throat> okay. They were both originally from Chambersburg, so they mm. had a lot of family there, and my grandmother was there, so... How did they end up in Bedford County then? Uh, the state police work? State or? police assignment of duty. Okay. Hmm. Did your father have a lot of stories about working on the turnpike then? Uh, yes. And some <laughs> gruesome pictures that we weren't supposed to find. <laughs> but that you uh, found anyway? And we found. Hmm. Just like car accidents and. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. He had to bring them home to study them or whatever, and they were away, but we found them. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I guess at that point, too, I mean, I mean, seatbelts probably weren't no. required or anything no, like we that. Didn't so, have them yeah. So a little bit more deadly to be, a, be in a car accident. Right. Okay. So, uh, when you came to Newville, though, at that point, there was no consolidated school. So did you uh, have to attend a one-room schoolhouse, or...? We came, uh, we lived uh, prior to coming to Newville in Carlisle for a year and a half. I did okay. go to the, the Basin Hill Elementary one-room school for a year and a half. Mm. So that was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you attend a one-room schoolhouse in Bedford County? No. No, okay. It was so a regular you, grade school. So that, yeah, that was a big difference then. Mm. What was that transition like from, you know, going to a regular school to a, a one room schoolhouse? Uh, well, I'd gone to the grade school in Bedford, so yeah. that wasn't too bad. So I, this was just a temporary till we got the house in Newville. Interesting. It was eight grades, and uh, mm -hmm. we li didn't live too far from there, so it was right across the road and go to school. Because, you know, it's, it's funny because when I speak to a lot of people, they have very fond memories of being in a one-room schoolhouse. It was. It was. Yeah, but yeah. I guess... Uh, at that point, I was 10, I guess. <laughs> uh, and new to the area, so you hadn't grown up with the... Well, I make, made friends easily. And okay. There's a lot of kids, we, you know, we had a lot of games outside, and it was good. And you could help the... Help the uh, one teacher that was there mm. and unfortunately it was a bathroom outside <laughs> <laughs> well yeah cause it seems like that's the other thing that these schoolhouses have in common is mm. students doing a lot of the chores in terms of right. bringing water in and with the the furnace and, and then all, yeah the outhouse <laughs> <laughs> it's all an experience sure so at least i can say i went to one yeah <laughs> you and went then, where <laughs> and then when you went to and then when you moved to newville then the schools had already consolidated at that, at that point? Uh, basically, yeah. The, we went to the elementary school in Newville, which was the old mm -hmm. firehouse now. Okay. So we had to walk in town from Broad Street is where I grew up. 
That was okay. a little bit of a hike, but... So, yeah, so no school buses at that point? No. <laughs> Not for us in town. Okay. <laughs> but there were for the other. Uh, that uh, high school was built, uh, it opened in 1956, mm. so... <clears throat> We used to walk into the elementary school in Newville and take the bus up to the high school. Okay. And that was 1956 when it opened. Uh, what did you do for, for fun in after you had moved into Newville? Sort of like after school or on the weekends? or. Uh, I did a lot. Uh, when I first, we first moved there the first day where well, there was a porch on, I was out on the porch, and there were a bunch of guys across the street about my age or younger, and a little, mm -hmm. maybe a little older. They were all playing with cars and trucks that were in the sidewalk, and they said, come on over. So <laughs> that was my first experience, and it was a good one, and mm -hmm. got to know. There were a lot of boys and girls on the street that we all, um, we used to play hide-and-seek. Okay. And a game called Kick the Wicket mm -hmm. was, uh, we improvised, we used to have a stick about that long, We'd lean on at the intersection, lean it on a, either a telephone or an electric post, and kick it instead of a baseball or a. <laughs> so <laughs> we would run the bases, and they'd hit us with a stick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, I think one person I spoke to you from Newville, the uh, Bob Over, so oh, yeah, a little yeah. bit older, but he mentioned that when he was growing up, there was a lot. I mean, roller skating was very big. Yeah. We did that. Okay. Hey, Bob's a good friend. So, yeah. 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 He lived a little further in town. <laughs> but yeah, that was roller skating and sledding. They used to rope off our street and you could sled down a hill. We used to go over to the Pepsi farm, which was right at the edge of town. Okay. And had a great hill to go over there. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I was in a little league, Boy Scouts, and some church activities, and so kept busy. Was this a uh, Big Spring Presbyterian, or? Uh, I belong there now because my wife belonged there, but Zion Lutheran was the okay. church I was, and I was an acolyte with a lot of friends from Boy Scouts, and we were all, I guess, 12 to 14, somewhere in that age, mm -hmm. to 16. Okay. And we had a lot of beautiful older women. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we sat up front and we could see everybody. <laughs> they were kind of like our imaginary Mrs. Robinsons. <laughs> sure. Those beautiful women in hats and... Yeah, yeah. Sunday and best. We were lucky enough to have some very pretty ones out there. Very nice. I won't give you any names. <laughs> no. Well, you mentioned that you played uh, Little League growing up, and I know baseball is uh, was and still is very popular. Yeah. Um, were you into baseball before you came to Newville, or was that... I guess just on uh, street, you know, or in the playground. So I played little, or, uh, little League a couple of years, and then was done with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you didn't... Uh, well, I, didn't I did, but I didn't stay it that long, and there were... Yeah. Um, People who were more interested. Right, right. <laughs> that, that happened to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you were among the f one of the first classes to go to the uh, consolidated high school, is that right? Yes, from ninth grade to 12th. What was, uh, what was that experience like? You know, having this new school that... Uh, kind of amazing, I think, with how, how large it was, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of friends, a lot of good teachers, and you know, move around between cr classes, and the cafeteria was always fun. <laughs> now, uh, You'd already, I, I guess, gone to kind of a consolidated school, but I think for a number of your classmates, that was kind of their first experience, you know, not being in a one-room schoolhouse. Did they have a more difficult time adjusting, or...? I, I don't think so. I think everybody did pretty well. They all came from the environments around. And okay. We bust in. So people, families kind of knew each other mm -hmm. then? In town or, or from everywhere? Yeah, from everywhere. Uh... Somewhat. Knew everybody in the local area. Okay. So. <clears throat> well, just what was a what was a typical day like then at the uh, 
Was it was it called Big Spring then? Or? Right. So what, what was the Big day Spring like? High at, school. What was the day like at Big Spring High School after, when it first opened? Uh, somewhat confusing until you found out where everybody and everything, <laughs> where everybody should go and sure. where your locker was when you left it. Um, I, I was a pretty good student, so I didn't really have much trouble. Okay. Uh, and one of the things I had to do, there were a couple of us that uh, put the flag up in the morning. Mm. It was kind of an honor to, to do that. So we did the flag, and uh, they started a... Uh, a program where uh, I remember reading the news over the intercom. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I'd check at night, cut out of the paper what I thought was a good short news article to read. That was interesting. Was this part of like a, a club or was it just something the administration? Uh, National Honor Society, I guess. Is okay. What, yeah, if you were, you got some extra little extra duties and mm. for studying harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you participate in any other extracurriculars or? Um, uh, let's see what else. I was in um, <clears throat> Sage Crew in the uh, yearbook and uh, a couple other clubs like that. Okay. And then, um, unfortunately, nothing musical because I don't have that talent. <laughs> Well, the stage club, I mean, that can be... Yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're putting on the show, so... Right. <laughs> um, well, I guess, <clears throat> was there a particular subject or that, that you really enjoyed studying, or like math or science? Almost all of them, I guess. Latin, I liked. Hmm. I had a great teacher. Um, so I, I think I was a pet, <laughs> so it was easy for me. Yeah. So, but that was a good thing. I learned a lot, a lot of vocabulary, and it served, it served me well. Do you remember who the teacher was? Mrs. Finkenbinder. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that helps when you have a, a good teacher in high yeah. school. And she, she was over at Green Ridge until uh, she was 93. Okay. Used to visit her occasionally. Mm -hmm. But she used to talk a lot. You know, <laughs> a stream of <laughs> consciousness at <laughs> yeah. all different places. And, Anyway. All right. So uh, is the school, is that still the, the school now, or did they move or build a new that, high school? The high school is the middle school, and they built a new high okay. school. Yeah, because I, I haven't been to the middle school then, so the current middle school, but I've been to the current you high school. high school, okay. Yeah, and I, yeah, to me, that that's extremely big, so. My wife ran the uh, cafeteria. At the high school. At the new one? Mm hmm Okay. And the old one. And, yeah, so it yeah. moved. So uh, it was a good uh, career choice because she could be off when the kids were off school. And sure. It was, she'd get out early when the kids were like, coming home. and you know, She met a lot of friends. <laughs> went through there. Well, how, how, did, uh, how did the two of you meet then? We were in class together. Okay. Uh, along with Dick. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I think... Uh, Richard mentioned that he uh, he and your wife went to prom together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he said, I guess you you guys. We did. We were just in the uh, the same group. We were always friends. Sure. But never dated in high school. And didn't okay. date till after, uh, in the sixties, I guess. Um, we both went to Penn State at the same time. Hmm. And I was in architecture, and they lost their accreditation my second year <laughs> due to some um, it was a new building and they didn't have enough staff and they didn't have okay. the library completed and uh, they kind of were in a, a probation for at least a year or two yeah so a lot of us jumped ship so I went to another school and graduated well which school uh, I went to Maryland took some courses until I was uh, accepted in sequence with the design classes at Pratt Institute okay. in Brooklyn. Yep. Good school. Yeah. Jean finished at Wilson. Okay. So. See so, yeah, it nearby in Chambersburg. Yeah. So uh, had you started dating uh, Jean in while, while you were at Penn State, or? No, we were just friends. We'd see, go to dances and see each other there and do some things. Maybe go to the Rascal or. Uh, 
But so after she graduated from Wilson and you graduated from Pratt, you kind of both ended up back in Newville then? Well, she, she came home uh, to take care of her mother who was ill. Mm -hmm. And uh, I graduated in 67 and got my letter in the mail that I was <laughs> drafted. Mm. So luckily I knew somebody who had a medical unit, which is what I wanted to do. So I got into an Air Force Reserve medical unit and was out at Andrews most of the time. So when I came home from basic training, I called Jean because her mother had died over that period and said I was sorry and um, how's she doing and what's yeah. she doing. And she said, well, I'm out here with Dad taking care of the horses. And she said, you want to come out for coffee? Because I did that and we did that in high school. I said, sure. So that's how we started dating. <laughs> I said, Jean, I think we're the last two around. <laughs> yeah. So, so we started dating and... We knew everything about it. We had similar interests, art and refinishing furniture and sales, and mm. so we got married. Had two children, uh, a daughter, Shannon, who's 47 now, and a son, mm. Ben, who's 45. Ben lives in Carlisle, and Shannon lives on a farm near us uh, along the Big Spring. All right. So you mentioned, uh, just going back a little bit, that uh, you were in an Air Force Reserve unit in Fort Andrew. Andrews Air Force Base. And in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., yeah. okay. And so most of that, what, what, did the, what was that experience like? Just, was that uh, back office or? Uh, it was the medical administration. So okay. I didn't, uh, I didn't like blood that much. <laughs> I didn't like the training field, so I ended up on the floor. Mm. So they, how about the medical administration? I said, you're wrong. That's what <laughs> they did. But we helped unload some of the planes that came back from wherever at that time. And mm. it wasn't pleasant. But Yeah. It was probably similar in some ways to seeing those photographs of your father's that were hidden away. Well, I got over those before. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't end up with the floor. <laughs> So, uh, how long were you at uh, Andrews Air Force Base? It was a six-year reserve uh, or, uh, requirement. So, it was 67 to 73? Right, right. Okay. So, and that was a bad time for the Vietnam War, yeah. those years. And did Jean come out with you, or did she stay back in Pennsylvania? She stayed here, yeah. So, we had the children then, and uh, I would just have to go down weekends. Okay. Two weeks in the summer. I, did you drive back or? Yeah, but it's, not, it's not that far. All right. So, yeah, like, I'm thinking it's like two hours nowadays. But well, it's about, that's what it was. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, probably less mm -hmm. traffic then. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it was just around the Beltway to the. Sure. Below Washington was where it was. So, I got to see a lot of uh, the Air Force One. Yeah. <laughs> not, not in flight, just <laughs> while it was parked. And um, so is, did you, you mentioned that Jean worked, uh, she oversaw the high school cafeteria, but at that point was she staying home with the kids or was she still? She was doing some part-time work. She worked at the uh, Dr. Alwine's office, was a, who was mm. a local yep. physician, and uh, the library, and a few things like that until she started the high school. So it was not full-time because the kids were smaller. Yeah, so is that when Shannon and Ben had gone to elementary school then? Right, or? right. Okay. And did they go to the same elementary school that you had gone to, or? They, that was the Newville, uh, by then the, the elementary school was the firehouse. Okay. At the Newville Elementary. They opened building. up a new building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, yeah, so, I'm trying to think, is, is Mount Rock a middle school at that point, or is that an elementary school? That's that where the high school's located on Mount Rock Road. Yeah. Okay. Isn't there a middle school there? Uh, yeah, it's the same. Okay. It's the middle school and the high school. All right, so that's the current high school. Right, right. The old high school. So after 73 uh, and your reserve time is up, when did you end up? I'm, getting, I'm assuming you came back to Newville then. Well, no, I was always in Newville. I just had to leave for the uh, you know, one weekend a month. Oh, okay. Two weeks in the summer, so I was around. Oh, okay, so you weren't there. That no, wasn't that your was, permanent. No, no, no. It was just, and I was working for an architect in Harrisburg, 
and they sort of were slowing down. It was an old, old firm. Mm -hmm. Built a lot of uh, things we know. Um, but they were slowing down, and we were only working a couple days, and I decided I wanted to try teaching, so I substituted and was there at West Perry, and the superintendent liked me, and he said, do you want to finish out? It was like October, one of the shop teachers uh, they weren't happy with. So I stayed that year. He said, next year, next year. <laughs> so I was there five years. So I did go to uh, Millersville and get my uh, teaching certification. But high school wasn't my age group. No. So I ended up going to uh, <clears throat> the uh, National Education Center, the old Thompson Institute in Harrisburg, <laughs> and ran the drafting department and with codes. and. But that was a proprietary school, so the uh, uh, retirement and the benefits weren't that great. So mm -hmm. somebody called me from the Commonwealth and said, would you like to come over and work with us? So that's why I did Department of Health, reviewing codes and working with architectural projects, and mm -hmm. then transferred over to labor and industry. So that's I retired from that group. So it was all good. So you, uh, yeah, all right. So I mean, I'm trying to place some, so West Perry would have been Perry County, a little bit north of Harrisburg then. No, it's right over, over the mountain from Carlisle. Is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, as I mentioned earlier, I'm from. Oh, right, okay. I didn't grow up here, so. Uh, Elliotsburg, if you've been over there, like right over, if you go over 233, Dublin Gap Mountain. Okay. Down yeah. and take a left for a little couple miles, that's where it is. So it wasn't too bad of a commute then from New York. No, except in the winter. Up yeah. <laughs> the mountain. Yeah. That was all right. But Harrisburg was much easier. So. Sure. And then, yeah. So was that... Not I'm just trying to think. So in the end, though, when reviewing codes and all that, I mean, that was kind of similar to what you were doing initially with the, the architectural right, firm. Right, right. And with labor and industry, our, we have our own buildings. Mm -hmm. With Department of Health, we did hospitals and nursing homes and anything medically connected, any of the buildings, any of the mm -hmm. remodeling or new, we'd have to inspect them. And so labor and industry has their own buildings. So like with leases, leasing office spaces and all okay. well with that. Hmm. But it's, yeah, it's, it's still all relatively the same. Bailey, but I guess yeah, you just gotta <laughs> figure out which fence. codes <laughs> right. apply to which buildings. Right. Okay. So, I mean, did that? I mean, so you, I mean, you kind of shifted positions and, and roles over time. But I'm wondering, I mean, ha, did the work change at all? I mean, in terms of what you were doing or like how you would do your work? Got more involved. I think when I went to. Uh, Labor and industry, there was a new building code. It wasn't the old fire and panic code. It was the, it covered the whole thing. So, so they, more, yeah, just more, more regulations. Right. And, okay. They, so, yeah, so you probably had to spend more time at each site. And a lot more handicapped uh, mm -hmm. you know, issues and how far from the bathroom should be from, so. <laughs> okay. all those things. Oh, well, we took a lot of courses. Yeah, courses. I can imagine. Yeah. And you probably had a giant <laughs> reference book ready. Well, like in, in, a, in a hospital or in a nursing home, they have a uh, uh, a supply unit from the desk, and, you know, the mm -hmm. dirty linen thing. Sure. That, how far should that be? There's a requirement how far away they should be yeah. for the staff to walk there or get them. So well, there's a lot of little figures like that. You no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, I would have had a giant <laughs> reference book or... We had them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So after after I got uh, when I signed up for the reserves, yeah, uh, I signed up the end of June. So that was only a couple of months after I started that process. They said you have to report to Lackland, which is the Air Force training in okay. Texas, the day after Christmas. <laughs> and I said, okay, what do I do between now and then? Because I'd already well, was a member of the Air Force. They said nothing to report in December. I said, can I go to Europe? I said, sure. <laughs> okay. So that's what he did for end of January till 
Around uh, January, June. June, yeah. Uh, June till mid December. So that was my grand tour. <laughs> was that a lot of backpacking or? Uh, no. Uh, I got a car I, when I was over, an old VW. Mm. And I knew a lot of people over there that were traveling too. So uh, back then it was, uh, since we didn't have cell phones or we didn't, uh, was the American Express office was the means of contacting. You'd say, I'll, I'll be in Zurich in, in two weeks and I'll leave my where I am at the American Express office or, you know. So I got to travel a lot and it was amazing. I can imagine. A lot of museums <laughs> over that period. The I regret, but uh, I landed in uh, Luxembourg, went to Germany, North Germany, uh, Scandinavia, Norway, mm. Sweden. Not Norway, but Denmark, Sweden. Came down, went through uh, Amsterdam, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, parts of France, hit Italy, did Greece, uh, back along the Mediterranean. Touch base in Spain just to get it stamped on my passport. Then it was time to go back and fly home. All right. Yeah, because I mean, at this point, the... That wasn't... I don't good. think the, the... I mean, the EU didn't have the... the I'm forgetting the name of it. The... Uh, Euro pass? No. Uh, what was it? The... The Essentially, like the common traveling zone, like once you're in one EU country, you can oh, travel no, to the no. other. The Schengen no, agreement. All, all borders. Yeah, so, I mean, was that difficult then, like having to go through no, it wasn't. customs every yeah. time? Or, hmm. So, it was still relatively open. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nothing had happened then that made it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it was, I mean, you mentioned you saw a lot of sites, and oh, was there anything that stood out to you at the, over that time period? The one thing I regret, I was so tired driving through Italy, and I drove up to the Leaning Tower Pisa in the parking lot. Yeah. And I said, yep, it's leaning. That's it. <laughs> Didn't even get out. But everything else I did, all, all the museums. And sure. I just wasn't going to go, gonna walk up there. Um, it'll come to me in a second here. What, you asked me what some of the work and stuff I did in Newville? Well, no, well, one of, yeah, so actually I was going to ask a little bit about how sort of Newville has changed, but... Well, walking to school, you used to know everybody. Everybody would be on the porch or in somewhere. You'd, sure. You'd know, you'd know everybody by name, and everybody knew you. You, know, it was <laughs> a, you could stop in for cookies, and yeah, know, it was great. Now you hardly know anybody on the... Well, I, you know, I'm just thinking back to that, the first day that you moved into Newville and mm -hmm. you know you s there was like gang playing yeah. with you know toys and trucks and, trucks and, car and cars yeah. and they invited you right over I mean I imagine that's you know people don't seem to know their their neighbors right, or right. allow yeah. people to play outside anymore either so yeah we knew everybody up and down the street down <laughs> and, you know all through town it was a, it was yeah. a, a secure feeling I guess sure. you got from that, because you didn't have to worry about anything. Now you mentioned that um, were your parents involved in any sort of civic organizations, or was it mainly just Mount Zion? <laughs> no, my dad was a Mason. Mother was a the Women's Eastern Star. Okay. I was a DMLA, which is like Boy Masons. Hmm. We'd come down to Carlisle with some of my friends who were in it as well, and Boy Scouts. But when Newville had the train station, we took the train to Atlantic City. Wow. So that was a group tour, you know, trip. That was fun and things like that. Um, I worked during high school. Uh, there was a uh, <coughs> a little uh, family store at the end of. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Fairfield Street. No. Uh, it's one of them. Main streets heading towards Shippensburg, but I worked at a, uh, uh, a store there, a family store, grocery store. Okay. A couple, of, you know, focal days here and there. I worked uh, at the First National Bank. A friend of mine was leaving, and he said, "Do you want? Uh, uh, do you want my job?" I said, "Sure," but you know, I had to talk to the yeah. bank people, and you know, I got it, and I had my own key to the bank. Uh -huh amazing at that time. 
So I was supposed to stop in on the way to school and just check out, you know, with, uh, empty some waste paper cans and mm. dust a little bit and make sure everything was ready to open. So I did that. And maybe on Saturday I'd mow the yard. And they have a little, little side yard and mm -hmm. sweep the sidewalk. And yeah, it's not a bad little gig. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I did that cover a couple of years and it was, you know, they trusted me. Yeah. So that was uh, impressive, I think, probably because my father was, <laughs> yeah. they knew I had to be good, you know. So, yeah, I'd go in the morning, unlock the bank and walk back up while I was in there. Mm -hmm. you know. I, a lot of I had a, a group of friends that had, well, one particular person had a car on Broad Street, and mm -hmm. they'd wait outside. Well, I did a quick run through, and mm -hmm. that was fun. And then <clears throat> there, there was a theater in Newville at that time too, wasn't there? Oh, there had been. that burned before, not too much before we moved there. I think oh, okay. In 52, hmm. I think. I didn't know that yet, because I'm just trying to think. One person I interviewed, I think her father worked for the bank, but then he became the manager of the theater. Oh. So I, I didn't know if there was... Oh. How close Can I ask you that was? Uh, is it Joanne Brem? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's older. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's okay. the right story. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, she's still living. She's, yep. Um, she's a friend. Okay. From mostly from the historical society. Yeah. And there and so I go to all the Newville Historical Society yeah. meetings. It's, it's a good group. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm slowly interviewing people from. <laughs> Okay. From it, so it's where a lot of my new little historical knowledge is coming from. Okay. So it's a it's a little bit interesting because I don't know much recent stuff, but <laughs> the old stuff. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't realize the the bank era, the uh, theater had burned down. So I'm sort of a history buff, so I know. When yeah. I, I I used to know the name of the movie that was playing when it burned. Okay. It something it was something connected with. Fire, I think. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, at that point, I imagine the the old reels would get really hot, right? Oh, I'm sure. I don't know what caused it. Uh, mm. I'll, have to, I'll have to. Okay. Ask yeah, a, I did know. Richard, I did. yeah, look into it. Yeah, Bob ever would know, or Joanne would know. Yeah. So. Well, so then I know. Um, you taught. Not only did you teach woodworking. But you also made your own sort of furniture, is that right? Uh, repaired it or... Uh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, you mentioned that you and your wife would do yeah, furniture yeah, repair. Yeah. Right, yeah, because I think uh, Richard said you were a little bit of an artisan <laughs> in that field. So how did, how did, was that just a natural offshoot of your work, sort of woodworking, like teaching woodworking? Well, or? I think I was always interested in old furniture and, you know, repairing something or saving it. Uh, mm. Why throw it away if you can fix oh, it? Oh, yeah, you mentioned you were a history buff. So right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, I have a lot of family history that I'm working on and uh, a lot of things that were family items or the, that I like. Did your, I mean, did your father have an interest in some of that stuff too? Yeah, or? he did. He had a shop, woodworking shop. Okay. And some of the family history I learned from him. Yeah. Actually, there's a, Further back, they're uh, Old Order Mennonite, horse and buggy. Okay, yeah. Um, and I still have relatives that I'll see that are in Chambersburg or uh, in that area. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, I mean, could you uh, just describe a little mm. bit about what sort of the, the process you go through to sort of repair or something? Is it, I mean, is there a lot of research, or is it kind of just, you know, by, uh, by eye, or? Mostly eye, you know, mostly glue and okay. <laughs> the clamps, if you can fix it, you know, then you have to refinish it if you just, you know, use a stripper for it and mm. refinish it, another item. 
Is there is there a particular style that you particularly enjoy working on, or? Uh, I like just about everything. I know we have a lot of. Uh, my wife passed away about three months ago, mm -hmm. so we did work on a lot of stuff. There are a lot of uh, old, like eighteen forty, some pieces we have that are that old, and mm. uh, it's country pieces and Victorian. So it's all all interesting. I'm mean, sorry. So, what? So for the most part, the repair is it just sort of like, is it just like cracked or broken, and, or is it actually like fully replacing like a particular? If it's not an, an ornate piece, you can you know fix it. You know, okay. usually if it's that bad, I'll have somebody professionally do it. Mm -hmm. So. But rather than, if it's there, if it needs something, rather than... Throw it out. Throw it out. Yeah. You know, I'm a saver. <laughs> I know it can be fixed or, you know. Sure. Okay. Well, it was a thing of beauty, and it belonged to somebody, and that's kind of what... Yeah. <clears throat> now, most of the items, are they acquired, like, in auctions or... Some. Some family. Just sales? Pieces. Yeah. Family pieces that... And yard sales, even. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What other people don't want. Right. <laughs> I know I asked my father one time. Uh, his father died before he was married. And uh, my, his father, grandfather, had a couple of farms out in, uh, outside of Chambersburg. And my grandfather, that I never knew, died in 1940, I guess. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they had a sale uh, of that household, and uh, I asked my dad why didn't you know there was a grandfather's clock that came from Germany, and he said, "Well, nobody wanted that stuff then, you know, except a few, you know, a few far-sighted people." <laughs> yeah. So, but that was the uh, and I have things from you know the sheds and stuff out up there that nobody. Bothered to drag out some great old plank bottom chairs and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff that could be fixed or reglued or yeah. sanded. So. But uh, some uh, we've traced some things down and gotten it, but nobody if they didn't want it anymore. Or <clears throat> so I guess that was you know when I started being interested in that era of when you could get things. Mm -hmm. Good sales and all right. So th this would have been like the nineteen seventies then, or pretty much. Yeah, we got married in uh, late sixties. Okay. So we both liked to collect and both liked refinishing and fixing things. And yeah. Hmm. And that's when we started raising sheep too. <laughs> I, so I, I'm, I'm assuming if you're raising sheep, then you're you're not living in town then. No, we have a farm. We had a farm close to town. Okay. Then, uh, we bought another one up along the big spring. We, okay. Now is that something that uh, they that you wanted to do, or did it just kind of fell in our laps? <laughs> yeah. We had a smaller one right at the end of. Do you know Newville? Somewhat. Where the medical center is, the okay. little bridge that goes in, there's a lane that goes back along. We, we were in the borough, but we were sort of a farm in the mm -hmm. borough. And then it uh, got a little cramped with some people buying lots out of it. And uh, we had a friend, uh, Craig Kennedy, who was a teacher. He was from Newville. <clears throat> and we used to, we didn't have the uh, room or the, we didn't have our own hay, so we used to take the truck and right up along the spring to a, somewhere we knew that mm -hmm. sold hay. And the, there was a sign out at the end of our lane that was for sale. And Gene and Craig and I said, we've never been back there. I said, let's go back. <laughs> so we did. And the Mennonite lady came out and she said, oh, no, no, no. We said, we just drove back to see what was back here. And she said, well, come in and look at the house. No, right. no, no. no. So two hours later, <laughs> we were all over it, out in the fields and all over the barn. Yeah. 
And Craig, Craig said on the way back, he said, you guys ought to do this. You ought to get that one. <laughs> so that so she knew so, what she was doing, bringing you into the house? And yeah, then, yeah. Well, it was for sale, and she wanted, they wanted to sell it, so. Yeah. It's a beautiful old brick house and barn and some shit built out, out buildings. It was 1810 when it was built. Uh, uh, it overlooks the spring. Whew. So, the good. And you decided to, to raise sheep there? We had some at the other house, so we moved them up along with the, okay. the kids. <laughs> yeah. Children, I mean. And was that just a... Uh, it was just a whim that worked out, you know. The, well, I was going to ask you, so the, the sheep, was that something that, was that also just a whim that worked out, or? Well, we needed, a, we needed something to uh, make it a farm. Okay. For all the tax advantages. Sure. Crops or animals. And they keep the pasture, you know, it looks yep. good. And it was fun for the kids, and, you know, just was a good thing to do. So, still have them. Okay. I, 31 lambs this year. Oof. Yeah, no, so I grew up on a, on a farm with Didn't sheep, you? so I, oh, really? I'm a little bit biased. Okay. <laughs> what kind? Yeah. Oh, man, I... Black Suffolk, black face, black legs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or most of them, I think. Okay. Same with ours, most of them. They used to be all, but getting the right ram was hard. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think a few of them were <clears throat> white face and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, yeah. I, I, I have fond memories of growing mm. up. And <laughs> did you did, did you share your own sheep, or did you have someone come in and do that? We had them at the first house, and we had six. So we we took the uh, course how to do it. Mm -hmm. We had the clippers, and uh, got my mother and dad to come over and help to do the <laughs> six. I still remember my mother with paper towels in her hands trying to hold the feet because she get her hands through. <laughs> Mother, you can't do it that way. Well, that's the way I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. So. But as they became more and more, probably. Oh, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. My dad would help because he grew up on a farm. My mother didn't. But, yeah. Um, no, I'm saying, well, so you said you, you shared them yourself when there were only six of them. Right. And then we got, found out who, uh, where we could find people who did share them for okay. very inexpensively. So we always helped uh, yeah. catch them and put them where they should be. To, I don't know how to do it, but using somebody with a much better back, younger back than <laughs> mine now. So. Was, it, was that, the, did you ever do uh, work with the, the gut shawls? Is that uh, a name? Uh, no gut shawls, but uh, they were farm. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the, the reason I ask is uh, my my supervisor, uh, Kara, her mother's family were the Gutshaws, and they all raised sheep, or at least her uncle did. They're out towards Dublin, out towards North Mountain. Uh, I think that's... Middlesex, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> no, not those. Not them, I don't. No, okay. Right. Elwood and... Uh, the big Gutshall family that lives out there. I'll have to ask. Could be. Okay. Wait, yeah, I think there are two Gutshall families, so it could be the other one. All right. <laughs> um, so you say, but you still have the sheep then? Uh, or they're... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're still raising sheep, I still should Still raising say. sheep, yeah. And I, uh, well, when Gene was sick, I it was, uh, like, my kids would say, how dead how long I'm going to keep the sheep. And I said, it's my, um, uh, what I want to say, my relief yeah. to go over to the barn. And so and I said, <clears throat> when Jean was going to a uh, daycare in Carlisle, Menno Haven, mm -hmm. or Messiah daycare, uh, they would take bus trips, and I'd go along to help. And we used to go to the farm, they'd take them to the farm show. Mm. And I saw a, a sweatshirt that said, life is much simpler at the barn. I wanted to get, but I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah. But it's true. It's, yeah. You know, you just shut down. All you need to do is feed them and give them some water, and they'll come over and talk yeah. to you, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, 
the sheep are still there for the uh, the tax advantages. Less, I'm assuming. I mean, they probably make sell the wool and stuff like that. But no, uh, you don't really make any. Yeah, it's hard to sell the wool now. It used to be fun for the kids. They'd come down to the fairgrounds. There was a wool pool. That oh, okay. Uh, Burlington used to come in and buy it. Mm. And there was a day in the summer, early summer, you'd take all your wool down there and they're gigantic bags. They'd stomp it down into like big sausages. Yeah. <laughs> the kids used to do it and had fun doing it. <clears throat> yeah, because I'm just trying to think, you know, growing up, you know, like carding it or whatever. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. You have drop spindle? Can you do that? Make sure. <laughs> I think my mother used to be able to. Oh, okay, okay. Mother, but, I tried it. But yeah. Jean uh, was in a spinning guild in Shippensburg. So she okay. learned, learned a little bit of stuff. But yeah. I think we t Shippensburg used to have a woolen mill. Hmm. No, I think we had a blanket made. We took it up and they did it. But yeah, no, yeah. It's <clears throat> my uh, wife's grandfather. Uh, she had he raised cows for a long time. I okay. think for that exact reason, where it was just you know life is simpler in the barn, so <laughs> it was good to get out there and right, just yeah. have some cows and yeah, hang out with them. Right, <laughs> but I have a lot more interest beyond that too. So yeah, yeah, I think art's a big, my big art uh, interest that sort of made me want to do you know work on the furniture and paint and all those things and. Hmm. So somewhere, we're a Joe and farmer. <laughs> yeah. Except I did get my feet dirty in the barn. Yeah. Well, so you said you also painted then? Yeah. Okay. On the furniture or was that a separate? Uh, it's more like uh, watercolor and oil. Hmm. So. so yeah, you had a lot of varied pastimes then. Right, right. <laughs> Water release. Sure. At venues to take. Hmm. I made a couple of notes before when I was, uh, in case we missed any. Things. Yeah, well, that was, uh, that's usually the final question I have is what well, did I miss? <laughs> uh, let me think. Uh, well, all the other kids on the street, and it was uh, warm relationships growing up. Uh, kick the wick out, we did that. Uh, uh, we did a lot. My parents and some of the um, neighbors on a um, on the street used to have a cabin over in Three Square Hollow, which is over the mountain in Perry County. Okay. So we used to go up there a lot. Uh, and uh, was that just like a just a getaway or a hunting cabin? More of a hunting cabin, but cabin. But we used to go over for picnics and uh, hmm. uh, after school uh, we used to go to the the bus would bring us down to Newville and let us off. And now we were free. <laughs> so the Newville had a little corner drugstore. Yep. Uh, that's where you headed. But um, my friend's family had that. Was it like a soda fountain and all that? Yeah, or? a couple booths. And uh, we used to go in and get cherry Cokes and the, you know, the cheese hmm. crackers. That was the big thing to get after school. All right. So. Yeah, it was one of my friends, his parents did that, so. Uh, then we used to get out of the Legion, which wasn't a, uh, it was uh, a building in Newville. They had a skating rink and a uh, bowling alley underneath, and mm. we used to get out there and dance after school, uh, to be home by a certain time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of friends went down there after school, but they also had to be out of there, worked at the grocery store, worked at the Pepsi plant in Newville for a while, I think it's summer. Mm. At the end of Newville, towards Shippensburg, there was, I think it's still there, the Pepsi plant. I, yeah, I didn't know there was a Pepsi plant. Yeah, little one. I knew there, Cloverdale. Cloverdale, that's what, mostly, mostly uh, Pepsis and uh, okay. uh, ginger ale, that kind of thing. They always called it the Pepsi plant. All right. The farm over the hill was the Pepsi farm. That's where we, uh, uh, flooded. Yep, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that. Uh, I mowed grass for uh, extra money. So it wasn't just uh, the bank then? No, I kept busy. 
Um, there was a little uh, grocery store down the street on the corner called mm -hmm. Fry's Grocery. That uh, was just a house with a front storefront on it. Sure. And uh, we used to go down there for uh, we knew the people, and there was an older lady that worked in the back. She could all she'd give you ice cream cones for cheap. <laughs> Ann Edie was her name. Yeah. Uh, uh, flooding. Uh, uh, oh, one of the uh, alley behind our house, behind Broad Street, uh, Mallory's. Uh, Levi Mallory was his name, the father. And he was the, uh, Don Mallory who opened the drive in. Yep. His father. They had a warehouse back there and they used to ship, it was right by the railroad tracks. They used to okay. ship peaches and things out from there. Hmm. So we used to go back and they'd give us peaches and things in the, the summer. That was always a treat. Um, there was an old uh, minister that lived on the Broad Street. There was a Reverend Coonard. Okay. He used to sit in his, he had a desk in the window in the corner. He used to sell stamps. He was a stamp collector. And if you, uh, if you got money, you could go out and buy stamps from him. I used to do that. I have a couple of stamps albums. Stamp albums. Hmm. With stamps, so he used to collect stamps. I'm just, so you just... Did, I mean, did each stamp have a value? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some of them are fairly expensive. Not that I bought the expensive ones, but you, yeah. know, you were spending 50 cents was a, you know, an old stamp that was worthwhile, but you're mainly spending, you know, a dime and a quarter. But sure. You were filling, you had books that needed certain ones, and okay. he could get them for not too much. And so it was a fun. So he, he had connections that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he had a lot of he had a lot of stamps and books and you know the plates of stamps. That he, and, he was a big collector. Okay. Um, he would. And was did did he have a ministry in Newville or was he just retired? And, retired. Yeah. I don't know where he did. All I knew he was a stamp guy. <laughs> I think his name was Reverend Kerner. Okay. Hmm. So. All right. Well, thanks for uh, yeah for coming in today. Well, thanks for asking me. I uh, know yeah, my pleasure. I learned it was a great place to grow up. Yeah, I have a lot of friends. I, uh, it's funny because I, I, I spoke with uh, Paul Spar. Do you know Paul? Older Paul Spar. Yeah, he was a good friend of my parents. Yeah, and I mean, he was telling me back when Newville had uh, old wooden pipes and oh really? Okay. And, uh, none of the streets were paved and all Dirt, that stuff. Yeah. Yep, and uh, I mean, yeah, that was his. You know, he said the same thing. He He'd almost a be a hundred. Yeah, I think he was like ninety-seven. Yeah, 96, he was yeah. a. My parents used to take road trips with them. Okay. To California, Canada. Canada. Wow. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I haven't seen him for a while, but I ask about him. Yeah. Who else did you? Uh. Sounds like I might be the youngest one <laughs> so far. No, uh, uh, maybe. Uh, Ron Bachman. Oh yeah, he's uh, younger. John Bailey. I'm not sure, John. Uh, he lives right, bef like right outside Newville. Kind of, there's a bridge that goes to Green Ridge, right past his house, or right before his house. I forget which. Right after the road to Green. Oh, is he on 233 or the Spring Road? I think he's on 233. Okay. I could be mistaken though. All it's right. kind of like the back way into Green Ridge, I think. Okay, that'd be the other way. Oh. Yeah. Is he married to Pat? Somebody? I don't think so. Hmm. Tell me that. Um. Bob Over. Okay. Joanne. Uh, Shirley Heishman. All right. So, um, and then a while back we interviewed George Ginter. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think those are most of the new little people anyway. Mm. He's out at the mill, George. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we interviewed him at the mill. It was January. It was okay. freezing. Okay. All right. <laughs>
My wife's great great grandfather in that ran that mill. Okay. Way back. I lived in that the brick house across the road. Not remembering it, but again, okay. it, it was like three, yeah, three and a half years ago. Okay, it sits down a little bit on the left side of the yeah. road, and there's a brick farmhouse on the other side. Okay. Okay. I remember there was a hill that kind of went up. Yeah, on the yeah other past side that house. Yeah. yeah. But okay. That, okay. He was, I have his diary, the, the McRae that used to live there. Hmm. And, you know, the story of, uh, <clears throat> blank, <laughs> Lewis the Robber. Yep. Okay. Yes. Um, in his diary, it mentions Lewis the Robber is around today. So, <laughs> <laughs> or they're looking for Lewis the Robber, or, you know, those kind of things. Hmm. But, you know, the hotel? Yeah, the Dublin Gap. Yeah, what they used to do. When Lewis the Robber was up in the hills hiding out, mm -hmm. if it was safe to come down, they'd put a, a sheet or a blanket out on the balcony. With that. With the banister. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. The, yeah. Sheriff, it was either he was here. They if they took it down, he wasn't there. I forget. I think if it was there, it was okay to come down. <laughs> yeah, no, he he seemed to have an interesting story, Lewis the Robin. Oh yeah, yeah, the Robin Hood. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming in. All right. I hope I gave you a little more information. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Every little bit. Ads.